some songs that I thought mothers would like. So we've chosen one here. I think you probably know it. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice that I hear falling Washed in his 
his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Song, second verse. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long. Uh, you're a good choir. I've asked Renee, who used to go to church here. He still goes to church here. Until he moved. The nerve. Got a job out of town. Anyway, um, I've completed my voice lesson training with him, and he's good. So he's good to go. I, I should say, I should be taking lessons from him. Uh, Rene came to this church when he was very small, uh, two years old, and that's been many years ago. So we appreciate the fact that he is still here serving yes. the church, Another serving the, the Lord, and working as a music teacher. And when he comes to town, I almost always try to have him sing something because it's like a, an angel. God bless you, Rene. Go ahead. life alone and never fill the longings of my heart the healing warmth of someone's arms and I could live without dreams and never know the thrill of what could be with every star so far and out of reach I could live without many things And I could carry on But I couldn't face my life tomorrow Without your hope in my heart I know I can't live a day without you Lord, there's no night and there's no morning Without your loving arms to hold me the heartbeat of all I do. I can't live a day without you. No, no. Oh, I could travel the world, see all the wonders beautiful and new. They'd only make me think of you. Have all life offers riches that are far beyond compare to grant my every wish without a care. Oh, I could do anything, but if you weren't in it all, I couldn't face my life tomorrow without your hope in my heart. I No night and there's no morning without your 
sounded so good. <laughs> well, this little thing right here. All right. There you go. It's a little hot now. <clears throat> Just like you, Lily. I need prayer, okay? <laughs> I was going to mention that. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. I got a butter up. Right. Not one word of God's change. Every promise still remains as he was, he is today. Every promise still remains as he was, he is today. Not one word, not one word of God is changed. Not one word of God is changed. Every promise. Not one word, oh, not one word of, of God's change. Amen. 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 
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy, bless His holy name. has done great things he has done great things bless his holy name bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul church I love when the church worships your singing is so inspiring I'm sure you don't feel it but I do can I go uh, crazy here can I do whatever I want I won't get fired Old people are now freezing. It's cold now. Yes. I told you it's cold. <laughs> Take it up to 72 for the old people. It is 72. That's not. I'll bring you a blanket. I see 75 on there. What? Good to know. Let me know when that happens so I can smile. <laughs> How many of you have ever been healed in your body? How many of you today need something done physically that God only can do? Keep your hand up for a second. We serve an awesome, awesome God. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. He can save, he can heal, and I know that he will. God can do anything but fail. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. He can save, he can heal, and I know that he will. God can do anything but fail. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. He's 
in the mighty name of Jesus, we send forth the healing word of the Lord, the redemptive, restorative word of God. By his stripes, we are healed. Lord, we thank you in advance for all you will do to demonstrate your glory and your authority in our lives. Receive the praise for all that you do, both in how we live and how our body responds to the touch of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bring healing today to the physical frame. Calm the troubled mind and still the disturbed spirit. Heal the broken places and make us whole by the power of your name. We give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we ask these things. And if you agree, say amen. 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 How sweet and happy seem Those days of which I dream When memory recalls them now and then And with what rapture sweet My weary heart would be If I could hear my mother pray I could only hear my mother pray in more track. I could only hear her tender voice as then. How happy I'd be, would mean so much to me. If I could hear my mother pray again. She used to pray that I on Jesus would rely. Shining gospel way. So trusting in his love, I seek that home above where I shall meet my mother some glad day. If I could hear my mother pray again, if I could only hear her tender voice as then, how happy I'd be toward me. I can hear my mother pray again. Her work on earth is done. The life crown has been won. She is now at rest with him above. Some glad morning she, I know, will welcome me to that eternal home. I could only hear her tender voice. How happy I'd be would mean the world to me. I can hear my mother pray again. If I could hear my mother pray again. It's Mother's Day. I think I've shared with you before the hardest job, I think, as a pastor is to preach these major holidays that come around every year. Same topic. How am I going to find something unique this time? And this will be 34 Mother's Days that I've spoken. Is it more than that? 85. Who's good at math? 40, 40 <laughs> Do I hear 50? 
So. That's what I said, 37. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Somewhere in my life. Um, I've been thinking, I mean, this is going to be about mothers. Trust me on that, eventually, <laughs> maybe right away. Um, but, um, well, we, we know moms have a strong influence over a child. That bond between mother and child is really strong. We know that. Even to grandchildren or great-grandchildren. If you, there's something about reaching back to grandma or great-grandma or grandpa that to a child, as they get older, they will really appreciate. So um, I'm encouraging all of you to stick around as long as possible. They're, the people who follow us need an anchor for the soul. My daughter and I were talking yesterday, I believe, well, we were talking yesterday, but I mean about this. About how there's, there's this, when you come on the scene as a child, you really think you're pretty smart. And all the people that are older than you, they don't know what you know. They don't experience what you're experiencing. They've never, they don't relate. It used to be called the generation gap. Now, I just call it them being stupid. <laughs> but they can't help it. That's the only worldview they have. Wisdom comes with miles. And you have to get some before you can appreciate those who have it. But the book of Proverbs, which talks a lot about how sons should treasure and value the instructions of their mothers. It says parents too, fathers too, but especially mothers. There's something about the younger generation. It takes a while for you to get a brain. Well, first of all, biologically, your brain doesn't develop for a while. So when you're in grade school and then junior high and high school, all the hormones are raging. You're physically, you're, you're caught up to what looks like adulthood. But your emotions and your worldview and your perception and, and how to handle life, it's just not there yet. You, you can't possibly be where you should be. And so our culture has a foisted on the younger generation more than they should ever be handling emotionally and physically. They're rushing into the sexual revolution and the drugs and the relationship and, and all the, you know, I don't think you're smart enough to vote till you're 25. You just, everything's emotion driven. You don't have a, an anchor and if you're not connected to Jesus and God's word, you're a complete blithering idiot and you think you're the smartest person that ever lived. I am probably the only person that wasn't like that. <laughs> yeah. Somebody throw him a fish, keep him occupied. So I began to go through the scriptures, and you know, there's a lot of familiar verses, and I'll read them. We're, we're going to go to 2 Timothy 1.5, where Paul is speaking to Timothy about his spiritual depth and where he got it. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. So you can see, mother, grandmother, mother, son, how the anchor spiritually was passed from generation to generation to generation. And Timothy's the leader in the church, but if it hadn't been for his grandmother and his mother, where would he be? So as a younger person, um, now I'll, I'll give you this. When I was growing up, the older people, I look back and I go, well, there's a lot of things I shouldn't have done or that, they, that shouldn't be done. Because there are lots of mistakes. Now, I don't want you to miss here. I'm not disparaging my upbringing. Because they anchored me to Jesus. But did they do everything right? No, absolutely not. And I didn't do everything right. Smart as I am. That's questionable, huh? Phil, waiting? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's right, I'll get around to your kids later. 
So doing everything right is not the issue. Being anchored to the Word of God, to God Himself, that's your source of wisdom. Now, it's great if you can walk out this great wisdom. It's wonderful if you do. It's wonderful if you've always got your temper or temperament in check. You know, it's, I don't know if you do this, but you should read through Proverbs every now and then. The whole thing, slowly. Thought at a time. Take your time. Don't be in a hurry. Wisdom is acquired gradually, usually by mistakes, bumps and bruises. But the role that a mother plays is indispensable. And then, you know, we live in a culture that dads are out having a good time. They can't be bothered by family. Many homes have no father. And there are various causes, but the end result is the same. A child without a father misses that influence, especially a godly influence. So I just want to say off the top, thank God for you mothers. What an incredible stability you are to the society, to the country, to the nation as a whole, to the church of God. Proverbs twenty nine fifteen, To discipline a child produces wisdom. But a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. Been, look at that. I was attacked. Did you send that bug to me? I was in a grocery store the other day. She shall remain, remain nameless. I was in a restaurant the other day, which shall remain nameless. And there was a child, not the same child, but child of a particular nationality that was absolutely uh, wild. It has been my observation that some cultures don't seem to value the discipline of children, particularly sons. And I'm thinking, they just don't understand life. God's plan was for a mother especially to establish some guidelines for a child. Let me ask a question. In your home when you grew up, who was the disciplinarian, your dad or your mom? Mom? Did she ever use the line, wait till your dad gets home? <laughs> yeah. The bond of a mother-child relationship is able to shape the destiny of a nation. Because in fact, you're not just raising children, and I got this line later in, in here, you're raising missionaries. We live in a culture that has abandoned the principles that got us here. The country was founded on God. Our nation's founders were Christians. They were believers. And when you abandon that, you lose your sense of morality. Your anchor is adrift now. You can do anything you want and call it okay. Really? How's that working out so far? But no parent is honored by having a brat for a child. No parent is honored by that. If a child is undisciplined or untrained, it's a disgrace to a mom and a dad. It's a disgrace to your family. It's a disgrace to the church. Children aren't born perfect. Um, no matter what temperament your child is, they're still rebellious. They don't want to be told. Well, tell me what to do. You see how Phil turned out. <laughs> You're welcome. Just trying to. Only that perfect in other way. <laughs> yeah. Even a lying demon can come to church, I'm telling you. <laughs> there goes your lunch. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's an unruly crowd today. 
The Middle East has given mothers a bad name. You know, they treat women with a certain degree of disdain. They don't honor, at least it doesn't appear that they honor moms or motherhood, especially under Mohammedan rule. Um, in Bible times, it wasn't like that. And I want to give you some references on that. In the Bible days, women were more on the same social plane as men. Sometimes they would occupy leading public positions. Exodus 15. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine and led all the women as they played their tambourines and danced. And Miriam sang this song. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider fell, cast, thrown. Yeah, anyway, got wet. The book of Judges. Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel on the hill of the country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would come to her for judgment. 2 Kings 22. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Aziah went to the new quarter of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huldah. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, son of Haras, the keeper of the temple wardrobe. Women weren't necessarily subservient or lower class or not in leadership positions. Somewhere along the line, the church has uh, mistaken Paul's instruction about women keeping silent in the church because that was a cultural issue. I'm on a, I'm on a parenthesis here. It was a cultural issue where men sat on one side, women sat on the other, and questions they would talk back and forth. What does he mean by that, Hezekiah? I don't know, Hepzibah. Talk to me when we get home. It was disruptive to the service. Kind of like Phil here. <laughs> okay, I'm done with you, Phil. I'll, I'll give you a break here. So the disruption, Paul was saying, can you knock that off? Let's just be decent and orderly and uh, keep it calm. But he wasn't saying women in certain circumstances couldn't be leaders. Um. I, I know there will be some pushback on that. Um, it's okay. In the Old Testament, Hebrew women loved their children. Motherhood was highly respected. In the arrangement for uh, Rebekah's marriage to Isaac, when Abraham sent his servant back to his homeland to get a wife for Isaiah, I mean for Isaac, excuse me, in Genesis 24, the servant prays a certain prayer, Lord, I'm, when I approach a water place for my camels, and there's somebody with water. Lord, may she offer me a drink and then voluntarily offer my camels a drink. And that's exactly what happened. And Rebecca agreed to go back to be Isaac's wife. But in the discussion in the family, the father, the mother, and the brother are all conferring, and the mother seems to have an equal voice when you read through there. So I'm saying women weren't wallpaper. Genesis 28, the story about Jacob and Esau. Jacob obeyed his father and mother, and evidently his mother was his chief counselor. He listened to her and made plans with her, and she was manipulating behind the scenes. And So, you know, it, nothing's changed. Humanity's still the way, you know, culturally, some cultures put people down, but there's no less than for women in Christianity. The Judeo-Christian ethic, men and women are equal in the sight of God. And anybody that wants to say otherwise should just reread it. In the law, the child is placed under obligation of honoring father and mother alike, Exodus 20. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The child that strikes father or mother or curses either of them is punished by death. Well, don't, aren't you glad that's not still in effect? That same fate overtakes the habitually disobedient. They were to take the rebellious, continually disobedient child to the city gates where the elders ruled and made decisions, and they were to tell exactly 
what the child was like. He's rebellious. He's a drunkard. He won't do what we say. He's incorrigible. And the elders in the whole city were together and stone him. And God said, thus shall you eliminate the evil from the land. If judgment was sure and pure and swift, it would be different than our system of get-offs and technicalities and escape hatches that we have today. When we let child molesters and rapists and murderers out because we've got a no-bail system, or you've got Gascon in Los Angeles, the district attorney that won't prosecute, and other places where people aren't understanding there should be a consequence. So when a child grows up in a home with no consequences, back to the restaurant or the grocery store, when a child grows up where there are no consequences, you're producing an individual that does not understand right from wrong. And therefore, it's the destruction of the culture. In one place, the law even places the mother before the father in order of filial obedience. The psalmist depicts the greatest grief is that when one is mourning for his mother. I mentioned earlier the entire book of Proverbs is filled with how sons should reverence, love, and obey their mothers. In Isaiah 66, comfort is described as the way a mother comforts her son. I will comfort you there in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her son. Any mothers here got sons? There's, there's a unique bond there. What's true in the Old Testament is true in the New Testament. Very same high value of womanhood. Um, the birth of Jesus Christ certainly lifted motherhood to the highest possible plane. And the last thing Jesus did on the cross was bestow his mother to John the Beloved as his special inheritance. What woman is today, what she is in particular in motherhood, she owes wholly to the position to which the scriptures have placed her. Sometimes a stepmother is spoken of as a real mother. Sometimes a grandmother or other female relative is spoken of in that way. Sometimes a whole nation is spoken of as a mother, and the people are her children. Sometimes large cities are called mothers. Now, we all know there's a war against everything decent and right. We know that. If you didn't know it, you intuitively know it, because um, hell is against all that is good and all that is right. But in particular, there's a war against the family. They are demasculizing. Is that demasculating? They're making men look like women. And women are trying to become men. Did you know you can't change your DNA by a wish? Unless you've got a genie nobody knows about. You can't wish that you were a different gender. You can't identify as something you are not, whether you do that or not. Your DNA in your cells does not change. Have all the operations you want. Change your equipment, okay? You're still what you were born. But when you think God makes mistakes, when you don't ac accept God as the absolute authority on all things, you think you're smarter than he is. The arrogance. It's unbelievable. But how do they get like that? Some parents abandoned their children. I'm going to let them make up their own mind about religion. What that says is, all religions are the same. They all mean nothing. Pick whichever one you want. It doesn't matter. That shows that the people who say that are idiots. No offense to the idiots. Because all religions are not the same. There is only one God. There's only one way to heaven. And it's Jesus. He proved who he was. He proved who he said he was. He raised himself from the dead. Pretty phenomenal. 
So when you've abandoned that simple, basic foundation thinking, you're adrift now. You can just make it up as you go along. It won't matter. So I saw a special on TV a few days ago called, I think it was last weekend, The War Against the West. Anybody see that? What are you doing Sunday nights? <laughs> the War Against the West. I think it was on the whole weekend. I saw it Saturday and I saw it Sunday. It's really not a war against the West. It's the war against Christianity. It is an anti-Christ spirit. Because without Christianity, there would be no Western civilization. Without Christianity, there would be nobody walking on the moon. There'd be no air travel. There'd be no automobiles. There would be no modern technology. Christianity paved the way for freedom. That this country could be founded recognizing that our rights are given by God. They're not given by the government. I don't need the government's permission to do anything. So Christianity is the bedrock of Western civ. Without it, there would be no Western civilization. There'd be no United States of America. There'd be no freedom. And so now we have a whole host of people in a particular political leaning who want to take away freedoms. You're not smart enough to be free to think whatever you want. We have to have a disinformation czar. How stupid are we? There have always been liars from the get-go. The Satan was the first liar, the father of lies. There have always been liars, and we have to decide if you're telling the truth. And the way we do that is we get all the information we can, and then we make a decision if you're telling the truth or not. It used to be, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. And there was a consequence if you didn't. It's not like that anymore. So people have become slick. Spin doctors. You, you see the talking heads on TV, uh, one left and one right. And they talk and they talk past each other. They twist what you know to be true into something that's so unbelievable. And I, I just, I don't know if there's any hope if we don't have thinking people. So I'm encouraging you to be a thinker. These political forces are hell-bent on destroying this country because they want to destroy Christianity because that's the bedrock of our country. They're being guided by the spirit of Antichrist, which has its uh, origins in hell itself. These people are demonically inspired. Our system of jurisprudence is based on the Ten Commandments, the Judeo-Christian ethic, our laws stem directly from the Ten Commandments. And I think every person has a truth knower. You know truth from fiction. Now, if I go into a subject you're not familiar with and I say something, you might have a feeling of it not being quite right, but you can research and find out if it's true or not. We have a lot of information in this age. So I don't need somebody to tell me, you can't say that. I need everybody to say everything. And there is no special category called hate speech. Somebody made that up as the first step of eliminating your right of free speech. All angry speech is hate speech. All murderous speech is hate speech. Every vulgarity in our language is against what is holy and right and godly. Why do you think the F word is spoken in anger? The F word describes the act of love making that is to produce a child that God ordained that families have children. So when you use the F word in anger, how stupid are you? Come on. How dumb are you? Well, I, I know I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to you in the camera. Or whoever, wherever this goes. I, you know, preach it to the choir. You're all saints, except for Phil. <laughs> and he's a cherubim. Yeah. A wingnut, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so it matters what you believe. 
It matters how you vote. It matters how you live. It matters whether or not you honor your mother. Don't forsake the God of your family, your fathers and your mothers. Don't forsake him. It is the bedrock of our freedom. If you want the generations who follow us, we need to stand up against the tide and say, I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not going to believe those lies. I'm not going to tolerate you telling me what I can and cannot say or can and cannot think. You are free to be as dumb as you want. You are free to be as perverse as you want. You are free to do whatever you want with your body parts as you want. Is it right? No. But you're free to be wrong. You're free to be unholy. You are free to go to hell. No, I did not just tell you to go to hell. But you are free to make that choice. You don't have to go to heaven. You don't have to love Jesus. You don't have to surrender your life to him. But should you choose to surrender to him, you would have a whole different life. You affect people not even born yet. Because my parents took me to church, trained me in the things of God. I grew up to be a man of God. I had children. All of my children are people of God who follow Jesus, who love the Lord, who know how to share their faith. That is a great honor to me and my wife. I hope you have that honor. If your parents did not train you in the things of God, it's not ever too late to start that right generational thinking. I sometimes meet people, they have no concept of God, they have no concept of Jesus, don't know what it means to be saved, don't really know if they're going to heaven, they have no clue, they hope they go to heaven, they hope they can be good enough and somehow the good will outbalance the bad and somehow God, being a fool, will let them in. Well, God's no fool. But he does love you. I probably shouldn't tell a personal story. Okay, I won't. Beg me. No, not going to do it. Let me just say this. God knows where you are. He's tracked your every move. He had a plan for your life from before you were born. He's followed your every decision. He's cleaned up behind you more than you could possibly know. He's cleaned up more messes. He's cleaned up behind you all your life maybe. And he's waiting for you to say thank you. And to start to get his input on the direction you should be moving. God is waiting for you to say, okay, let's try this your way. I've been doing it my way. Yeah, it hasn't always worked well. But I know, see, here's what you need to know. If you keep doing it your way, you're not, it's not going to end where you think. It's not going to end well. It can't end well. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you don't come to him, surrender to him, walk with him, you have no chance ever of being in heaven. None. Well, that's not fair. Oh, yeah, it is. It's fair because you get to choose. God's not manipulating you. He's not making you. He just sends people along like me to tell it straight. I just, look, I've stopped worrying about whether or not I tick you off. I kind of hope I do. Because it'll make you think. A long time. Can you believe what he said? Can you believe that? And God will talk to you and talk to you and talk to you. And eventually you'll say, well, what if he's right? Are all those people crazy and I'm the only smart one? Back to talking to my daughter. She said, when you're young, you think you're smarter than everybody else. And only when you get older can you realize how smart your parents were. Hopefully. There's no guarantee your parents were smart. But I tell you who is. God's word is truth, trustworthy, life-giving, peace-inducing, 
love producing. God's word will change your life. Amen. So we should still honor our fathers and mothers. Family was and is God's idea. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that you will reap. Let us live God's way. Be salt. Be light. Let's make people thirsty. And then shine the light on how they can go find living water. How do you make people thirsty? By living in a way that's not the way they live. Having a peace they don't have. Having a joy they don't have. Having an assurance they don't have. But you can have it. It's free for the taking. Bibles are everywhere. Preachers are everywhere. Churches are everywhere. Are there some phonies? Sure. Let me ask you this. Are there some bad doctors? You'll still go to one, won't you? <laughs> are there some bad mechanics? Yeah, but when your car breaks, you'll try to find one of them to fix your car. Unless you can get a hold of Dave. Or Art. On the East Coast today, they're demonstrating in front of large churches, mostly Catholic churches, but they're demonstrating because they want to be able to kill their babies. I'll ask you a question. Are you glad your mother was pro-life? Are you glad your mother was pro-life? Pro-choice. It's just a misdirection. Choice about what? The choice is earlier, before the child is impregnating you. Well, what if I was raped? My wife is the product of a rape. Do you think God does not know when there's a rape? Every child is a gift of God. Every disabled child? How could there possibly be an unwanted uh, pregnancy? Because you are selfish. That's why. When you chose to entertain the urges of the flesh and have sex, you didn't think there could be a pregnancy later? Oh, we'll just abort it because some idiot told you that that's not a human? Well, is it a dog? Is it a bird? Is it a fish? Maybe it's a frog. When it's born, it's a human. Well, it's not a human until, oh, let's say, when it breathes. Really, what was it just prior to breathing? Something else? The Bible says, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. So that's why we value mothers. Without mothers, none of us would be here. You're, you're everything. You're it. You're it. There's nobody more special than mothers. And it doesn't matter what flaws you have. We love you. We love all of you. And it doesn't matter who has maligned you or not appreciated you or abandoned you or abused you. They are idiots. You are wonderful. You are special. And I love every one of you. We love every one of you. When you were born a girl, God had a plan looking generations down the road that you would be a linchpin a key decision maker, and others who would follow. I'm sure that my grandma did not know I would show up and who I'd become. And I'm sure I was third born. I have a brother nine and a half years older, about, and a sister four and a half years older, about, and a brother nine and a half years younger, about. And I am the preacher. What was God thinking? I'm just a kid.
kid born into a dysfunctional family. My parents weren't perfect. They were sharecroppers in Arkansas. Went to the eighth grade. That's the maximum of their education. No pedigree. Nothing special. But God built into me everything he knew he could use for his purpose. And I gladly surrender everything God put in me. Every spiritual gift, every musical gift, every oratorical gift. By the way, I wasn't always like this. I was shy. I thought I was ugly. I've gotten better looking as I got older. Phil says, I hope you live a long time and you get better looking. <laughs> I've become confident. I don't know how it happened. I just evolved. I became who God intended me to be. I can remember specifically at the age of 15, praying this prayer, God, I give you the rest of my life. And it was just a few days later, the whole piano opened up like a kaleidoscope to me, and I knew I owned it. I'd been playing by ear, but I'd been confined kind of right in here. And I knew I owned it. I knew it. It just, boom, it just blossomed. Later that year, I was contacted by a Southern Gospel Quartet out of Los Angeles. I traveled the summer with them. Um, before my 18th birthday, I went with a full-time gospel quartet, traveled and sang for four years, traveled the United States, Canada, Mexico, all over the place, traveling and singing for the Lord. I was willing to become rich and famous for Jesus. It didn't happen. <laughs> Even told God I had to pay tithes on that big money. It didn't happen. As it turns out, I'm quite average in the things that I do. I'm just one of many who do what I do. There are lots of people just like me. Average height, average weight, well, maybe not, maybe a little bit above average. Average IQ, average talent, average skill, average in every way. I'm just dedicated to him. He can do with me whatever he wants. So some years ago, after pastoring for a while, I began to pray, Lord, I give you permission today to change anything about me that you want. I'd read that in a book, and I thought, do I dare pray that? Because God hears what you pray. He hears what you say. He hears what you think. You have no secrets. Do you know that? You have no secrets. So, Lord, I give you permission today to change anything about me that you want. And he's doing things. And aren't you glad you say amen, 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 yeah. Can you pray that? It is a parent's responsibility, especially a mama, to discipline children, to train them in the things of God. You pastor children. I pastor a larger congregation. You're pastoring the children God gives you. You're raising missionaries. I hope God blesses your socks off today. All the mothers deserve every blessing and then some. You're the bedrock of civilization. Pam has a gift for each one of you today. When you leave on the table out here, there's a coffee cup with a flower in it. It's got dirt in it. Don't drink it. <laughs> it's just a little token of our appreciation for all you mothers. We love you. We bless you. Pardon me for rambling today, but I think mothers are special. I think the country's special. I think the church is special, and I want to preserve it. I want to do everything I can to help you be all God intended you to be. God has a plan for your life. Just keep walking with him. He'll unfold it. You, too, will blossom and become all that God intended. He had a plan from the beginning. He's not done. He's not anywhere near finished. Even Jeannie's not finished. She tried to slip and fall and break her stride, but she's back and on her feet. We thank you for coming, and thank you, honey, for bringing her. So God has plans, big plans. So let's ask the Lord to fulfill them in us. Just surrender to him. Lord Jesus, today, we don't know exactly what the future holds. Well, we know you, and we know in reality you see everything. So, in fact, you hold the future. So, Lord, we put ourselves in your hand, knowing that whatever comes, 
You'll take care of us. Bless mamas today. But Lord, bless us each and every one as we look to you for our guidance, and strength, and wisdom in all that we need to do life. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies so far in this life. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for clearing our heads to think, to get it. Lord, crystallize our thinking on things that are really right. May we no longer be confused or in doubt about what matters. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness and your patience with us. We bless you and we love you. Pray and ask all this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.